Carl, um, I understand you've been doing some interesting stuff with the KUKA robot and Grasshopper. Can you just tell me a little bit about the projects you've been working on? Well, um, for the last couple of years, I've been exploring the potential applications for robotics within architecture and the construction industries through the research and work I've been doing. A big part of that has been uh, expanding the knowledge base and teaching other people how to get involved via YouTube. One of the uh, great things about uh, using an industrial robot within architectural and the creative fields is that it's a six axis machine. And with that, we are able to do more creative and more uh, exploratory research within using curves and that by introducing people to the basics of five axis milling, as opposed to the more traditional three axis CNC. It means that we're able to produce more uh, creative outcomes with uh, curves and the parametric modeling that is so great with the combination of Grasshopper and a KUKA industrial robot. Where was this research done? I was very fortunate to be invited to do uh, some work at Creative Robotics at Linz, uh, invited by Johannes, who is a co-founder co of Robotics in Architecture. What is Grasshopper and KUKA PRC and why do you use those? Well, Grasshopper is a visual programming language that runs within McNeil's Rhino 3D CAD application. It's really focused on parametric modeling and computational design. And paired with KUKA PRC, which was developed by Johannes at the Association for Robotics Within Architecture, its PRC is parametric robot control. And it's a great tool for taking the computational design and really introducing it to the physical world. So a lot of what we do in the parametric and computational design is very advanced uh, designs that can't be done by traditional modeling and CAD software. So we're talking double curves and sort of uh, introducing physics-based modeling as well. And by adapting a KUKA robot, we can then introduce those very complicated designs into a real world application that can be then realized and installed on a building. What has the response been like on your videos that you've been posting on YouTube? When I was introduced to industrial robotics within architecture, there was really not that much out there. I was self-taught. I had a very, very good workshop manager at the university back in Tasmania, Australia, who was very supportive of my many, many long hours over a computer screen and with the robot. And after I got my Masters of Architecture, I identified a big niche in the market of there was nobody sharing the knowledge. There was a lot of very impressive papers and a lot of impressive projects coming out of other universities. And I just decided to share everything I, I had learned over those two years. And so the response has been generally positive. I get a lot of people asking uh, just for advice and tips and just uh, a bit of inspiration, I hope to share by giving the process a way for people who are introduced to the robot and get them up and running a bit quicker than I was. Uh, what other projects are you looking to do in the future with the robot? The big challenge at the moment is uh, if you look in the history of automation and robotics, you can, there's a very clear uptick in manufacturing. You look at the car industry and any sort of level of uh, factory-based manufacturing. The big challenge that we see at the moment is getting these tools and the robots on construction sites. There hasn't been a big uptick on the physical in situ installation of digital fabrication on site within architecture or the construction industries. So that's the challenge that really drives me, as well as continuing to teach people and educate and get more people interested in, architect in architecture as well as robotics in the creative fields. These are powerful tools and the more architecture and creatives that we see, perhaps we'll start to see more uh, buildings that are made of non traditional means and a bit more uh, variation that is, you know, available with the likes of computational and parametric design and a com uh, robot that can do a million things once is where it's at, I believe. It is an interesting challenge because in the past with industrial robots, we've seen robots that are path programmed to say spot weld a car body and they do that for their life. But in construction, things like um, installing drywall or brick laying, it's not a challenge that's as repeatable as traditional automation. 
Absolutely. It's, it's really with the introduction of powerful tools such as Grasshopper that we can have an individual panel that is a unique shape for a million or more different facade panels and a robot can do them all thanks to the power of parametric and computational design and, and where that wasn't possible 15 years ago. Well, this is a very interesting project and you've given us a lot of interesting information today, so thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.